Hey all, Nell here from The Overclocker. Now I've been looking at all sorts of ASUS Prime graphics cards and by now, if you've been following any of the previous videos, you're well aware of what the Prime graphics cards look like and in particular the cooler. On the Radeon RX 9070OC, which is what I'm looking at today, it's the same cooler that was on the 9060XT, the 5080, the 5060 and so many others of this generation of Prime cards. So, in this review, I'm going to skip all of that and just focus on what matters here, which is the performance and the value proposition today. To contextualize all of this for anyone considering a graphics card right now, the Radeon RX 9070, while being a potent offering, was not as well received as the RX 9070 XT. Not because it can't perform, but because of pricing. It was and remains too close to the 9070 XT to make a truly compelling case for itself. In fact, if you look at retail outlets locally and internationally, you see a lot more 9070 XT cards and fewer 9070 models, as you can see for yourself here. Here in SA, it's about as tricky as it can get because we don't have an exact price for this card and it's been out of stock for a while. And when it does come back into stock, it'll have a higher price because of the DRAM situation we are all facing. That being said, we've already seen some of the price increases in the ASUS Prime Radeon lineup with the Prime Radeon RX 9070 XT increasing by 2,300 Rand just over two weeks from 15,200 to 17,599. Now it was incredible value at 16K and in fact I'd say even now at the higher price where its direct competitor is the 5070Ti, it makes more economic sense than that card. Between 15,900 for the 5070 and the 17,600 for the Prime 9070 XT, the 9070 OC finds itself in a very narrow price band. It's presently not available at Woodware but at another retailer it's sitting at 16,450 which is just not appealing when the Prime XT is just a thousand rand more. Either way, all of this is easier to digest and contextualize when you know how the card performs. So, as I've said, we've exhausted all there is to say about the Prime cards and they are very capable coolers. If you still want to know about them, check out the previous ASUS Prime GPU reviews in the notes below. If you want to find out about the technical aspects of the RDNA 4 GPUs, please do yourself a favor and check out George's deep dive from Chips and Cheese. He does an exceptional job at this as always. Testing was done on the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K using the ASUS Maximus Z890 Apex, Corsair's Vengeance DDR5 memory, cooled by the Corsair IQ Titan RX 360mm AIO, all powered by the Corsair HX 1500i ATX 3.1 PSU. First up is the 3D Monk test, specifically Time Spy Extreme, Speedway, and Steel Nomad. It's clear that the Radeon RX 9070 is superior to the GeForce RTX 5070, at least where the traditional raster rendering is concerned. As for ray tracing though, Nvidia's architecture has an inherent lead and that's obvious in the Speedway test, where the 9070 is 2% behind the 5070. Overclocking adds some measurable performance to the RX 9070, but not as much as it does to the 5070. In the Unigen Superposition benchmark, we see something quite unexpected in that the Radeon RX 9070 is just not as capable as the RTX 5070 and again, when overclocking is concerned, the 5070 pulls ahead which is in line with the greater overclocking headroom offered by the 5070 when compared to the 9070 barring BIOS flashing and the like. In the game test, I included results from the upcoming Radeon RX 9070 XT review I'm doing at the last minute. But suffice to say, the 9070 sits comfortably in the middle of the 5070 and the 9070 XT. I would call this a 1440p card and here the 9070 just can't quite reach the heights of the 9070 XT. It's just 4.7% faster than the GeForce RTX 5070. Then in Forza Horizon 5, using the Extreme preset, we can see that the ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9070 is back to performing closer to the RX 9070 XT than the 5070. At 1440p, it's 17% faster than the 5070, which is rather impressive. In Cyberpunk 2077, we have a very interesting situation. The NVIDIA GPU and technology ecosystem is superior here, with the 5070 delivering the exact same performance as the 9070 XT. The Radeon RX 9070 finds itself behind both offerings by a sizable 20% at 1440p. And yes, I double checked the results. The 9070 XT and the 5070 using these same settings are neck and neck. 
An F124 using the ultra high preset and no vendor specific upscaling technology, we can see once again that in raw horsepower terms or more appropriately traditional rendering terms, the prime radio on RX 9070 is again between the 5070 and the 9070 XT. The 9070 XT is ahead by some marching at 1080p and 4K, but at 1440p is surprisingly close to the 9070. At 1440p, the prime radio on RX 9070 is a staggering 47% faster than the 5070, which is quite remarkable. We then have Battlefield 6, which oddly enough represents a more linear difference between all these three graphics cards. The RX 9070 is again between the two, slightly closer to the 5070, but nothing as egregious as what we saw in the Hitman results. All three graphics cards can handle the game exceptionally well, and of course the devs did a fantastic job here making the game look this good while performing so well. Then finally, we have Marvel Spider-Man 2 with all the bells and whistles turned on. FSR 4 is used for the Radeon RX 9070, while the GeForce RTX 5070 uses DLSS 4. At 1080p, these cards are all close together, probably due to a CPU limitation. Then, when we get to 1440p, the 9070 XT pulls ahead, leaving the 9070 behind, which is now much closer to the 5070, offering just 8% better performance. Both are not for 4K gaming here, obviously, but the 9070 XT can pull this off, offering 39% more performance than the Radeon RX 9070 and over 40% more performance than the 5070. Now that we've gone through the numbers of the 9070, it's clearly a very capable graphics card. With an overclock, it naturally gets even better. For the right price, this card is tough to beat, but again, it has to be at the right price when compared to the ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9070 XT and the Prime GeForce RTX 5070. The two largest threats to its value proposition are actually directly from ASUS's lineup itself. In a vacuum though, the performance is there. Now you factor in AMD's Redstone and all of the features it brings with it and we have a very solid option here. Okay, so I wanted to take this time to talk to you about the ASUS PSUs briefly as well. And this is the perfect time for that, obviously. While I've only ever been exposed to the ROG and to a far lesser extent the tough gaming PSUs, there are the Prime series which I've only come across right now. Because those other two are mainly for enthusiasts and power users. However, for normal people, what I found is that on the GPU's product page, I saw that ASUS actually has a PSU calculator and in fact, the PSU you've been seeing in some of the footage is what ASUS recommended as a companion PSU for this GPU. This is a 750 watt gold rated PSU that is the perfect match for the Prime Radeon RX 9070. Naturally, if you select other GPUs, it will recommend the appropriate PSU accordingly. However, it is cool to be able to check this quickly before making a purchasing decision on the very same site or product page of the GPU you are buying. Either way, that's it from me and the ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9070 OC. At the right price, this could be an incredible card, but as to what that actual price is, I have no idea. But either way, until the next time, please take great care of yourselves and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.